you know, folks. So we live in a kind of make-believe world. No truth, no authenticity. You know, don't know who is real, who is fake. You see, well, you need to look steadily as one who had started Youth for Christ with Billy Graham, a colleague of his, said to me, this gentleman who was a well-known person in Washington, he said to me, Oh, I'm a hard-boiled businessman, and I'm taking a close look at you. I was just a young fellow there. I said, take as long as you like scrutinizing me. I have nothing to fear. And, you know, folks, the Lord's blessing was upon those few meetings which I addressed that he was left in no doubt as to authenticity. Then the revelation television folks, the agent said to me, you know, there is so little today which is authentic. Authentic, of course, is a big word, which means really trustworthy, real, authentic. I said, what? You have preachers all lined up and you say, oh, but there is so little which is authentic, which is actually taking place. So we are living in a time when people just blow up some little stuff into a great big froth. But the Bible knows nothing about froth. And let's be careful to cut off, cut out anything that speaks of froth. We must be real to the core. So now there was a test. You know, unfortunately, in Christian life today, we don't see too many people actually passing tests. When I took over from my dad, you know, he was very protective of me. He had seen that I was a very young preacher. He first sh shielded me and kept me from the platform. Platform is a dangerous place. Gives you to be a Humpty Dumpty. So he kept me from the platform, protected me. Then he said to me, be careful. I don't want you to touch some of these cases of severe witchcraft. Oh, yes, I was out of my depths. I couldn't handle those cases. 
and Daddy knew it. And he kept me from the backwash that can ruin a person. So, let me tell folks here, I do not advise any woman to lay her hands suddenly upon some of these cases of black magic and other things that are very prevalent today. There is an awful backwash. Sometimes the devil begins to attack even the preacher. So, this kind goeth not but by prayer and fasting, said our Lord. A due preparation is needed, not presumption. So the, my dad kept me from those things. But then when he was taken up to glory, well, most of these tests fell upon me. I had to pass my tests myself. You see? No, nobody likes tests and examinations. Maybe there are some brilliant students here. I was always in terror and would have nightmares <laughs> about exams that were long past. <laughs> You know, as I said, I only got by. And uh, so, nobody liked tests. But we are passing through a real testing time. This is no time to be talkers. If you turn, please, to the 18th chapter of 1st Kings, 36th verse. Here is Elijah. He made himself known to the king and ranged against him were 800 prophets. He got all the prophets of Baal. 19th verse. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel and the prophets of Baal, 450, and the prophets of the groves, 400. So let me correct myself. In total, 850. And here was this lone figure. My dear friends, you know, when Elijah declared in the 17th chapter and the first verse, as the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand. There shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. My goodness, what authority God has given to his children or to Elijah. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get you hence, and turn eastward, and hide yourself by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. So, 
Now you won't like the fourth verse, should it happen to you. And I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. What do you mean to say you are going to restrict your diet or quantity to what the ravens can carry? No. You see, there is a certain amount of sacrifice needed for the battle on hand. The trouble with us is we want everything to be easy going, you know? And we like to go with the crowd. What does it really cost to jump up and down and shout hallelujah? Everybody is in the heat of fervor and religious enthusiasm. And you can do the same and get the notion that you're very religious. How is the home? How is the situation? You know, Mr. Spurgeon was once asked, is that man converted? He said, I have not asked his wife. You know, wives are forewarned. If you are an Asian here, let me tell you the story of Asians. They forewarn their wives. Don't you let the cat out. I must have total freedom to belabor you without anybody hearing a squeak. What nonsense. So I sometimes ask fellows, hey, did you warn your wife? How is it that she's so silent? Did you tell her, be on your guard now? You will go to the dentist. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> the, my children have a saying, there is no secret. If daddy gets to know it, he will take it to the platform. <laughs> <laughs> So, what is there to be secreted? If you are living a transparent life, there's nothing there. What are you afraid of? Publish it on the house top. You know, if a preacher begins to beat his wife, it deserves to be published on the <laughs> Oh, stop. What is that uh, hypocrite doing in the pulpit? How dreadful, how dreadful. We have made our homes places of hypocrisy. But you know, folks, when you live before the Lord, and you're ready to give short accounts to him, you are absolutely fearless. 